ready to master the waves of medical device product development? Well, wax up your surfboard because you are listening to Inspired by Amua. And here is your medical device product development expert, that Hawaiian-hearted hostess who will help you hang 10, Megan Alonso. Mai and aloha. You're listening to Inspired by Amua, where we help you master the waves of medical product development. Each week, we interview guests that educate, guide, and inspire to give you and your product the skills you need to hang 10. If this is your first time listening, Amua is spelled I M U A and it's a Hawaiian word. It means to advance forward with passion despite rough waves. There are plenty of those in medical device development. But keep listening because we've got you covered. So today I'm coming at you from Anchorage, Alaska, and it's a beautiful day outside, about 72 degrees and sunny. And I'm up here for my husband's cousin's wedding, and we took their dog for a walk this morning. We had a fun moose experience. It could have been not so fun. We were alerted that a moose was following us, and they, they don't like dogs. So if you have a dog, watch out. They will come after the dog. So we were able to safely get away from the moose, although it was an incredible sight. So here's a pro tip for you. If you're ever in that situation, go in the woods and hide behind a tree because you can use that as not as leverage, but just as a defense mechanism. And you can circle around the tree. The moose can't get close to the tree because they have the antlers. So that's what to do. Uh, Okay, back to medical innovation here, (laughs) which is the reason why I have my show. So I have a special guest with me today, and we're going to talk about a really neat conference coming up soon. I've been before. I always enjoy myself when I go, and I would love to see you there as well. So we're going to find out a little bit more about that from Christina Lingham that works for CHI. So Christina, are you ready to hang 10? Yes, I'm ready, Megan. All right. So we did your intro, and tell us about your background and how you ended up working in this industry and how that led to you working with CHI. Sure. I've been producing conferences for CHI since 1994, and I have an eclectic background. I really enjoy working at CHI because it's a constantly changing landscape. My background is in biochemistry, and I did research at MIT, and then I work for a diagnostic company before coming to CHI. And it was a perfect segue for me from my previous background of both uh, being in research and in industry. Yeah. And I really like, I mean, I always tell people that no matter what your job is, you need to be out there networking and conferences are always the good mix of that because you bring the content and relevant information about the industry, but then you bring together the people that all make things happen in the industry. Speaking of that, we have one particular show coming up. So tell us about the Next Generation Diagnostic Summit. Mm -hmm. So I started the Enabling Point of Care Diagnostics track 11 years ago, and it's now the anchor track for the Next Generation Diagnostic Summit. It originally grew out of a biodefense conference that I organized for a decade before that. So it's grown into an all-encompassing event for liquid biopsy, companion diagnostics for immunotherapy, molecular diagnostics for infectious disease. It's become the place for the diagnostic community to meet each other. You can learn what's going on with researchers developing new technologies as well as products and services in the diagnostic space. All sides of the equation come together at the Next Gen DX Summit, and it's a perfect place for building alliances. There is tremendous innovation happening in the diagnostic space, and this meeting is at the forefront of these developments. There's also huge participation on the part of the NIH, the FDA, payers, and diagnostic experts. And over the years, it's grown to more than 1,000 delegates. That's awesome. What's one of your favorite parts about the conference? Well, you know, the commercialization aspect. So it, what's nice about our meetings in general and this meeting in particular is it brings together early stage research with the 
companies that are developing products and commercializing them. Mm -hmm. And it's an international conference and uh, more than 30 countries will be in attendance. And that is, so for those of you hearing about this, it it takes place in Washington, D.C. every year, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. D.C. And mm-hmm. one of my favorite, so here, here's a conference tip if you're headed there, if you're thinking about heading there, one of my favorite places to go just a few blocks away from the conference is the POV restaurant and bar at the W Hotel. And so last year, one of the nights, I can't remember which night it was, but we were up there and it's like the whole a lot of people from the conference just migrated over there. And so you had these great conversations and getting to know everybody that you were sitting next to all day in the talks. And then you could just really have fun. Have, you could really have fun socializing with them. And it's called POV, stands for point of view. And you have a great view of the city up there. It's this rooftop bar on top of the W. So that's, that's a great little tip. tidbit. That's yeah. Great. Yeah, mm-hmm. ho- hopefully we'll see you over there. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't tend to be a night owl, but yeah, it, I know sounds great. I know my colleagues have gone, so especially I'm have to check it out. Especially after a long day at a conference, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. it's just nice to have a hot bath. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are some trends that you're seeing this year, and um, that we'll be seeing at the conference too? So, um. Well, for trends and highlights, this year, uh, there's a talk on a handheld diagnostic device for liquid biopsy. I've been working on the point of care in the point of care space for more than a decade, and I've been waiting to see what applications might emerge for cancer. So there's at least a couple of talks that are cancer related, and I'm excited about that. There's also an FDA speaker talking about validation of point of care and direct-to-consumer diagnostics. I think that's that's also a really important topic. And there's a keynote on real-time monitoring of immunotherapy with continuous point-of-care diagnostics. So I think that um, there's a huge need for uh, diagnostics to um, both select the patients that will respond to immunotherapy as well as monitor treatment. And so I think that's that's a really important development. Yeah. So that's kind of like uh, figuring out, uh, I'm losing my words here, but figuring out, first of all, before uh, companion diagnostics in a way, right? Like you figure out first if, if they're going to respond and then you build their treatment regimen with the medication after that. Right. It's developing a a diagnostic. um, Well, companion diagnostics is developing a diagnostic in tandem with your therapeutic from an early stage. And, and that, you know, if you have a diagnostic, you can figure out better the patient population that will benefit and also minimize adverse drug events. And, And why it's important for immunotherapy is that the vast number of immunotherapy drugs only work for a small fraction of patients. Mm-hmm. And when they do work, they work extremely well. But um, I think that's going to be key for immunotherapies going forward is to be able to identify the, the patient population that it's uh, going to work best for. Yeah. And it just saves those people time, you know, that way, oh, let's try this medication, see if it works. Wait a month. Oh, that's not working. Let's switch medications. Oh, that one's not working either. Let's try this one. You know, you can find out before you even start the regimen. It's also about the serious drug um, adverse events. You don't hear a lot about that with immunotherapy, but uh-huh. that it's, it's an issue. So it's both um, expediting the process, as you say, but also it's about saving costs and saving lives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I also picked up on one interesting thing you mentioned with the how the FDA is getting involved, as they should, you know, with the direct to consumer diagnostics. So are you talking about marketing directly to the consumer? So for the point of care diagnostics that are used at home, you know, that m- maybe are for sale in Walgreens or CVS type thing? 
Absolutely. And the 23andMe test that was approved, and now there's expedited approval based on that for future iterations of their tests. So Mm -hmm. I think that just in general, FDA approval of these types of tests is a really important area for for diagnostic manufacturers to to keep tabs on. Yeah. And as a consumer, I mean, I I love the fact that more and more diagnostics are being made available at home, but I also know from from my clinical background that of course it's it's more of a risk and how how are how are the patients interpreting that without the guidance of a healthcare provider. Right, right. It's definitely a risk say, with with the detection of a, a BRCA one or two gene and then, you know, what actions might a patient take uh, or, you know, a person Maybe they don't have any symptoms. They don't have disease. What actions might they take proactively once they get that information? If they're not talking to a genetic counselor and they they don't have someone trained to interpret that data, it, there is a risk. Yep. Yeah. So since the conference is in D.C. and there's there's always political agendas around no matter who's in office, well, how does the current political climate help or hurt innovation and in specifically in next generation diagnostics. And, you know, I'm asking you today, as of this recording, <laughs> July 12th, you know, this could totally change in a few weeks. So <laughs> right. I'm, not, I'm not holding you to anything. But <laughs> oh, it's a, a really good question, Megan. This year, we organized a special plenary keynote panel with representatives from AMP, AdvaMed, AACC, and ACS to talk about recent changes in government and how it will impact them with regard to healthcare policies in the Affordable Care Act. So I think it's a very timely discussion to have. And I know um, a lot of uh, agencies are like the FDA waiting for their funding to be approved for the following year. So it's still, you know, even uh, a month from now, there will still be a lot of uncertainty, but um, I think it will be great to hear from those representatives talking about some of the challenges that they face now and their their overall outlook. That's a great idea. And I, I love how you guys put that panel together and you're, you're basically taking all of these organizations that are active in lobbying in DC and uh, making a difference with changing the political climate for our industry's favor. And we get, we get to hear directly from, from them and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So next generation diagnostic summit is August 15th through the 18th. And what are some other conferences that are really similar to this, you know, if if people aren't able to make it to next gen, uh, maybe they'll come next year to next gen, but also what else do you guys have going on? Well, thank you for asking. So we do have molecular medicine tri-conference in on February 12th to 14th in San Francisco, and it covers a lot of the same topic topics, point of care diagnostics, CTC, cell-free DNA, digital PCR, prenatal diagnostics, cancer biomarkers, and infectious disease. And for your global listeners, we're also hosting the Molecular Diagnostics Europe Summit on May 22nd through the 24th in Lisbon. Mm -hmm. And it also has coverage of many of the same topics, but with primarily a European focus. So that's uh, mainly European speakers and and European attendees. Okay. Yeah. So that way they can hear more about the EU and CE marking as opposed to FDA and kind of what's going on there. Right, right. So there's some overlap, but but they're really different meetings. And the one in Europe, in Lisbon, is similar to the next Gen DX Summit in that it's all focused on molecular diagnostics, Mm -hmm. whereas uh, the Tri-Conference also brings in informatics and immunotherapy and other topics outside of um, diagnostics. Yeah. So CHI has a lot of stuff, like the 
obviously lots of different conferences, but how else can other people engage? And I know that you guys have webinars that you do periodically. So tell us about that. Um, well, the website has a wealth of information. Um, there are two places that you can go. One is um, to future conferences to see all of the topics that CHI works on. And then also there's a great tab for past conferences that gives you agendas for anything that we've organized in the past. And it's something that as a conference director, I take advantage of a lot. It's a great way to see, you know, what what we've been doing and speakers and topics that have been covered. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to mention to your listeners that they can use the IMUA promotion code to receive $100 off the current registration price. And the advanced registration deadline is extended until Friday, July 21st. It applies to new registrations only. Oh, that's great. So new registrations, you mean someone that hasn't been to the conference before or? People that haven't already signed up. Oh, people that are. Advantage. Okay. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for doing that. That's really a, that's really a, a great deal. So guys go take advantage of that right now before you forget. <laughs> and that's at, what's the web address that they can go to? www.nextgenerationdx.com. Okay, great. Well, thank you. So let's see, let's, let's close it out. I, that's a growing conference. I've, I've just been once before to, to next gen. I've been more to Tricon. And I know I've, I've heard bits and pieces in the past about how NextGen has, has just grown so much. And I think this past year, there was about 800 attendees. So I'm really excited to, to see it this year. And I know you, you expanded the exhibit hall because you had so many exhibitors sign up. So that's all really exciting too. Lots of great resources for anyone in the academic space, the commercial space, or anyone just thinking about getting into the space. There's a ton of great content for you. And I'm really looking forward to that panel, the keynote with AMP and Advamed and AACC and everybody else. And then of course, all the exhibitors to just support that innovation too. Great. Well, we look forward to meeting you next month and really appreciate the chance to talk with you. Yeah, thanks for being on the show today. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. You're welcome. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that interview. I want you to head over here before you forget. Just go to nextgenerationdx.com and you can register for that conference. Don't forget to use the promo code AMUA at checkout and save 100 bucks off registration. So that's a great deal. I can't wait to see you there. And actually, let me know if you're going to go because I would love to meet you in person. So until the next episode, AMUA. Hello for joining us. If you're new to riding the waves of medical device product development, or if you've been in development for a while already, Inspired by Amua is here to surf with you. Want to be a master of the waves? Text HANG10, that's H-A-N-G-T-E-N, -E to 44222. We'll send you the most common wipeouts companies make in product development so you can avoid them and reach master wave status. Again, that's HANG10 to 44222. We publish a new episode every Tuesday, so catch us at inspiredbyamua.com. Imua! Imua!